Well, so I'm gonna get us a little rain. Kick us a little update on our German millet that we no-tilled in here. It was before the 4th of July. So this is the current stand that we have. This isn't the stuff I I was drilling in in that video. Uh, we got back from our trip and I planted this. As you can see, I mean, I, I think we got a, a good stand. Even, in, even when we were transitioning across uh, the old rows, it, it seems to have done okay this stuff has not received any rain at all none it only thing we have gotten is a couple passes with the pivot but uh maybe three four inches down maybe three inches with a fertilizer pass this is a fertilizer pass it'll put an inch down we just got a little shower we haven't it's a 13th of July we haven't had anything in probably a month solid we haven't had any rain so some of this stuff's just now poking through um, that's planting depth issue just kind of where we had some humps that old drill super heavy and so you know they're planted deeper and it's taking longer to get up uh, this I this circle I have not wanted to put too much into it because this crop won't get too tall. Um, I wanted this to be more like a like a dry land crop, you know, limited irrigation. That way I can compare it against our hybrid pearl millet, which is uh, you really need to irrigate that crop to see what we could plant, what's most more efficient, and we can't really break it up as far as irrigation. We're just going to have to divide it between the two. But I, I kind of wanted to see what our inputs would be as far as tons. You know, just comparing the two to see what might be a better a better option to go behind wheat with. That way we could plant and cut and bale and then plant wheat again without losing any of our timeline. You know, we don't want to delay our wheat at all. So, that's kind of what this looks like. You can see, absolutely nothing out here. That's alfalfa. Uh, I've been told I need to kill all my alfalfa, but it makes makes for good hay. Good good stuff in inside the hay. See a little, little bit of stuff coming up there. Uh, of course, that hasn't been watered. Just randomly got some water on it somehow but that side's looking pretty good we'll go look at our hybrid pearl now I might as well just record this um, I planted some out here I had some extra seed so I planted across thought we might have some rain but we have it so anything that I planted that wasn't under irrigation hasn't even sprouted so I mean, there'd be nothing here, but this is kind of alfalfa that's out here. I need to get some manure spread out here, but I've been, been too busy. And right now with kind of the little amount of manure I have on hand, it's not really a pressing issue. I've got more important things going on other than trying to mess around with that. If it gets starts getting stacked up pretty bad, then I'll get on it a little quicker next year. But and I uh, we've been getting some steers in and stuff like that or bulls, and it's been super hot. We haven't had any rain here at the house. It just keeps going around us. There's been places right next to us that have had three inches of rain, but we haven't had a drop until today, and I don't think the whole place got it. But we may have gotten a quarter of an inch, and that won't do us any good unless we keep getting any, keep getting rain. But this is my hybrid pearl that I planted uh, the 16th of June. 
So it's almost been in a month now. Uh, it was the day before we went on our trip. So, of course, I just walked through a giant pile of mosquitoes and gnats. But this is, uh, this is doing pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it right now. This is my little four-wheeler trailer, so. Uh, then you see, like, some spots where it was kind of maybe missing a little, I don't know. But, uh, for not have ever no-tilled anything, I'm pretty impressed with it. You know, I've got blank spots, like here. And I wonder if that's not, like, it's not all the way across. I don't think it's, I don't think it's the drill. I don't know what happened there, but, um. You see that every once in a while. But for the most part, this stuff's looking pretty good. That's just foxtail. That's that's not what we planted. That's I used to have a lot of it out here. Um, this whole field used to be just solid foxtail, and I'd actually just turn calves out here, and they'd eat the heck out of it. It was, I mean, it was actually really beneficial. But so. This is what our hybrid pearl looks like. Of course, I've got tons of alfalfa. That side's just super thick. It's probably choking the feed down. We'll go look at it on our way out. But here's a here's a hard spot here. You know, it's probably didn't get the seed in very good. You see more of an issue here. Where I dissed these pivot tracks where I had more trash right here. You'll see it on around where it didn't do very good. Uh, I don't know what happened. Maybe it planted too deep. I don't know. Um, this is looking... I just got a blank spot there. But this is looking pretty good. Um, maybe it's a little... Yeah, I think it's a little thinner, actually. That spot is. Actually, look... Most of that just got choked out by this alfalfa. This side needs to be sprayed. I will say this side does need to be to be sprayed and killed. Because um, this alfalfa is pretty thick. See, it's just, you got that toxicity from the alfalfa there. It was coming up really nice, but maybe I ought to, maybe I ought to cut this side. I don't know. I'll just let it grow and see what happens. This may have been a, yeah, because there's like hardly anything in that. It was coming up really nice. I think this side's just too thick with alfalfa, is what it is. But we'll let, I'm not probably going to mess with it, because if I cut it now, then I won't have, I won't have anything, any regrowth by the time I have to disc it under. So I'm just going to leave it alone. But, yeah, it looks like I may have to kill that side out. Let's see if it won't help out some, but anyways, there's your 2018 hay crop update. It's all the hay I planted this year. So, we'll see how it does. I haven't, I haven't planted hay in a while. I've just been haying wheat. But that actually may turn out to be the better deal with that one half being stunted like it is. So uh, I just put a video up like two days ago of uh, am I wasting money or not. This is the 4th of June. I just cut this today. This is the same, same field I was in. Uh, as you can see where I walked up to the the center of the pivot where this stuff was real short you can actually maybe see like one of those spots left right here it's thin uh and this stuff is thin i will i will admit that it's we planted it thick but uh it's it's thin we grazed really hard nothing uh nothing oh stooled out for but i got some alfalfa in here there's not much alfalfa on that side of the circle, but this side, 
uh, there's quite a bit in it. So, I mean, it makes makes great hay. Big heavy windrows. I mean, look at this. I mean, just heavy windrows. So, it's not as tall as I was hoping it would be. But it's it's a uh, as I made in another video one time, it's, 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 it's dick high. Uh, some of it's, some of it's up to my chest, but this, this is the worst part of this field. This field's never been subsoiled. That stuff was, was almost to my shoulders. It was, it was definitely sternum high on that part of the field. And that's, that side of the field's always been really good. This side of the field's always been terrible. Uh, there is one spot through here, and it goes from, oh, about right there, and it runs all the way across here, and it goes over here. It's an old terrace. Um, actually, you can see it right right here. It kind of runs along. That spot's always bad. I need to throw a bunch of manure on there and work it in, but, you know, this, this here is, you know, it's right, right into my sternum. Uh... Usually, I wait until the soft dough with like, because I'm usually running, for the most part, I've done like four jotes and stuff like that. So, you get a lot of elongation and you get a lot more tons. It's not the protein content that, you know, where you have when it first goes into the boot. But, uh, you know, we're barely, not. we don't even have really anything in our seed head yet. Uh, so... Yeah, we don't have we don't have the seed in oats. I liked it because I always got the seed head. Uh, this stuff last year I went into the soft dough and it, it was a lot taller. This year it's not gonna get any taller because I mean, it's kind of stalled out. We've been kind of watching it and starting to get some some leaf burn down here and you're starting to get a few dead at the very bottom and. You know, if you're not careful in a week's time, that stuff can go quickly. A lot of this is just like rust. Um, you know, but we don't, a lot of that's just rust. But it's starting, it's starting to get to where it can cure out pretty quickly. Um, and that's, so we're not going to gain anything by letting it stay a little bit. Our alfalfa is fantastic right now in it. Uh, real deep alfalfa, so good solid windrows. And you can see in my four wheeler, and that's my windrow. Uh, and they're a couple inches deep. They're not just wide; they're deep and wide. So we're, you know, I hope, I hope we get on average over the hundred acres that we're cutting, we get at least three bales to the acre. I hope that we get more than that. But I want to be realistic about it. Today was too wet to cut. We got a shower last night and it was too early to cut. We we're pushing some mud with the cutter bar. And that's what those streaks are. But I was right here at the very end of the circle. So I just, you know, I kept getting out and scraping it off. But, you know, I'd go half around and already have some back on there. So I just finished it out. This stuff is a little better, a little less leaf burn on it you know but here you got a short piece but all in all I can't complain I really can't for as bad of a year as we've had I can't complain the only thing that I am nervous about is so I grazed these circles and this circle and we had absolutely no moisture this winter, so we had to water even extra. And our electricity has gone through the roof. And I, I, I don't, you almost can't afford it anymore. Uh, I'm going to switch to natural gas. Because uh, it's, it's just getting too expensive. And so, you know, I with the, the calves that I turned out there... You know, those calves are grazing for free, so that's lost income on that circle. You know, that's about $10,000 worth of lost income over there because those calves uh, had a pretty bad time with them in the middle of the winter when we were first getting them. Uh, we had several 
I mean, everything that was coming in during the winter in this part of the world just had so much trouble. So, I dumped them out there to, uh, to kind of just put some free weight on because I'm just robbing myself. Hopefully I can put enough hay up here that I'm not taking a loss on my wheat production this year. So it's, that's the only thing I'm really nervous about is if I'm going to put up enough hay to cover that. I think that I will, but you don't know until it's all baled and weighed. So I'm just kind of giving you a little, a little spin around. I'm going to let this pivot move and I'm going to go move that pivot over there. That circle is nowhere like this one. Uh, this one I pulled the cattle off and you know it got so bad we couldn't even water that one and we could only water half of that one and this one we knew was going to go into hay because it had so much alfalfa so you know we were only you know we we're focusing our water here and only on half of that one so half of that circle is going to be pretty bad uh, that's a 70 acre circle 65 70 acres the other half I don't know if it'll be this good. I'm hoping it is this good. Um, it's, who knows? You know, time will tell. I mean, that's, that's, uh, just gotta have a little, don't mean to get, you know, religious on everybody, but you gotta have a little faith, because, man, <laughs> it's, I just wanna cover my bills. You know, that's really, that's all I'm after. If I can cover my bills, I'll be good. Is this stuff too thin to do that? I don't know. Uh, it's got the height, but it's thin. And that's just part of grazing, you know. That's one of those things. Yeah, thankfully, there's enough alpha alpha in it. I think it'll work. And, you know, this is... That's why I like triticale. You know, everyone else, their wheat was 18 inches tall. This stuff's just growing and growing and growing. And... It puts me, I'm going to finish baling a custom job today, hopefully, God willing. And then I've got, you know, this stuff. I could wait. You know, I could wait a couple weeks. I don't want to because I'm going to be gone. But with triticale, triticale is my best option because it gives me so much longer to wait to do my stuff. So I can do my early custom work and then I can do triticale. And that's, that's a... That's really valuable to me, and it just puts on so many more tons. That, and if we wanted to chop it, we could, because it is tall. So, just thought I'd give you guys a heads up on this stuff while I'm waiting for my pivot to move, and we'll kind of go from there. And you can see, you can see here, you know, that's a small seed head. There's a lot of these. You know, last year on this circle, they were all like that and bigger. There's a lot of little seed heads. I mean, that's that's clearly from a lack of water in the drought and we've had some we've had some moisture so this thing really kind of turned around but if we had have had that rain when we did i would be a very very sad panda so well i got kettle checked so catch you on the next one